I was drawn to this trip because Linda is a mentor of mine. I have been involved in uh, Peruvian shamanism for about 15 years now. And this trip kind of came about because uh, my mom is Linda Fitch. <laughs> <laughs> I've been involved with the Kirill shamanic tradition for four or five years and I, I really love it. I got to a point where I wanted to expand my knowledge and my experience with it. When it came up, I just felt like I had to come. <laughs> I've always loved the uh, history and the wisdom of the shamans and the, the great teachers and the power places like uh, Machu Picchu. I was so open to the opportunity and I got so much more out of it than I thought I would have. I'm here because I have some wonderful friends on this trip who were more like sisters. My first reaction was no, I can't do that. But it didn't take me long to decide yes, this is something I am going to do. I feel like whenever big changes come in your life, it's always great to have a bit of a transition piece, and that's definitely what this trip has been for me. I have not been back to Peru for five years, so there was already that draw that I needed to come back because this land holds you so and speaks to you so once you come, it just starts calling you back and back and back. And so uh, this year when I saw Linda's offering, there just wasn't even a, not even a second of thought of Am I going to do this or not? It was like, that one, I will be there. I really felt for a long time like this was a special kind of a trip and it, maybe I wasn't special enough. Fortunately, these ladies absolutely encouraged and um, sort of pulled me along with them. And I also had a, a vision about Salkantai two years ago and I knew that I was supposed to come here. The mountain literally called me and couldn't not come. So that's why I'm here. Hi Lisa Hi 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 Pachamama. Hi Pachamama. Hi Lindita. Hi Lindita. Hi Tomuna. She is so powerful in a way that I can't describe, in a way that is um, indiscriminate, in a way that's no bullshit. Like you cannot not walk the, the true path. You can't, you can't deviate because you're going to get smacked. I really felt the immense, um, indescribable power of the mountain and that she will continue to keep me on track or I'm going to get my ass kicked. So <laughs> that's kind of what I felt. It was just um, breathtaking, taking my breath away. It wasn't the altitude, it was just looking at the mountain and in my connecting with the mountain, in my own personal ceremony. I spoke with the mountain and then there was an avalanche and it was like, oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, you heard me. Or should I be laid down? But just continuing to hike closer and closer and closer until we got underneath her. I, 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 I know I'll never have an experience like that again. Being in the beauty of it was absolutely breathtaking. I've learned so much and I don't even think I could actually tell you everything. I've just like embodied it and like it's in me forever and um, it's kind of hard to explain. She helped me to reach beyond what I thought I was capable of because I had to go up injured and come back injured. Um, but. It made me realize what I had within me. You know, I went well beyond the boundaries of what I thought I was capable of. Um, it, it expanded my heart, for sure, in doing so. And the peace that Salkantai encourages us in this whole journey is about receiving. To be able to step in and still own that wildness. So Salkantai, actually Salka, is wild. 
it really spoke to me. It, it spoke to me of my own personal journey. But it wasn't until we're trekking up there step after step and you're just in your own space, putting one foot in front of the other, going higher and higher. All of a sudden I look up and I see this magnificent mountain and it dawned on me that I'm coming home. You've called me here, I'm coming home. I came across my own tracks and I became the mountain not only clearly saw me, but actually showed me a picture of myself as the way it saw me. And I could see everything I was wearing and what I was doing and where I was sitting. And, um, and the feeling that came with it was such unconditional love. It was so just like, it's okay, let it go. It was really beautiful. Um, and to be seen in that way and know that you're loved, like the way a parent loves a child was really, it was beautiful. And I recognized that same kind of like fierce, wild, like superpower um, in, in the mountain and in the way I felt near, near the mountain. Um, and what I realized on Sulkantai was just that it's also comes with this like incredible love, deep, deep love. So I'm not afraid of it anymore. From the golden showers. Where did precious stones be between my teeth? And I regret it. One of the participants was asking me about how many people come actually for spiritual travel versus coming for like tourist travel. And really, I actually think there's a lot of people that are called to Peru. Um, they'll say, you know, I've always wanted to go see Machu Picchu. Or I've always been called down there. But they end up then signing up and coming on a tourist journey. We are at Machu Picchu. What do you think? It's really busy, <laughs> but really cool. So they come down and they'll experience Machu Picchu or they'll experience the sacred sites, but they don't get really the depth of what is here to offer them because it's hard to find that sacred travel. And I think that's what's different than what I offer is that place of coming on your sacred travel. It is sacred travel. This time I didn't take very many pictures at all because I was talking to the land and the land was talking to me every step up that mountain to Salkantai and every step down was talking to the land and talking to Pachamama and uh, giving my gratitude and thank you and then asking for assistance and support and then listening, you know, being quiet. It wasn't a whole, uh, this whole trip, yes, we had a lot of fun and a lot of gabbing, but there were also long periods of just walking by myself and dropping in, dropping in, dropping in each step talking more and more to spirit, looking at a stone and seeing what it has to inform me with, listening to the water, watching the birds, whatever, uh, whatever like that, just really dropping in. And to me, that is the sacredness of this trip. Of course, we can do sacred journey anywhere in the world. There's just something about Peru. It's almost like this magnetism of the land literally speaking to you as you're walking. And I feel very sacred in a lot of places in the United States. This is just different. There's a level of communication that is different here. And so that's what draws me back and draws me back. I don't know, it's sort of, it was sort of inspiring. Like I want to travel through all parts of my life that way. <laughs> you know, like every time I go to on a hike now, like I, I feel like it's gonna be, um, I'm gonna be able to like bring in a little bit of that like that this is this can also be a sacred experience because um, if you can travel and have that be a sacred experience then any experience can be can be sacred uh, this trip was definitely a, a sacred trip uh, my daughter's my best friend this guy uh, I adore her and she adores me and uh, so to be able to share the power place and, and these uh, great spiritual people and teachers was my honor to give to her. If I can put in some seeds in her, uh, that she's going to be our future, along with uh, the kids that um, are like her, you know, just a high vibration, uh, wise souls, then I, I feel that I've done my part. And I didn't ever know what that meant until this trip. 
it was all held in sacredness. I don't think I would have ever wanted to come to Peru if it was any other way. I think there's so many people in the world that are called through their hearts to really step into spiritual travel. And it's that place of answering that calling, but yet using your discernment to find someone that's authentic. Peru sculpts you in ways that I still can't even quite comprehend yet, but I know it's not done. There's still pieces that are gonna keep carving. It's so powerful, even if you're not into shamanism or like don't know anything about it, it's, you'll learn something, you'll pick something up, even if you don't actually know you are. It's, you don't have to know things, you can learn here, but you'll definitely learn something even if you weren't looking for it. You're gonna change. <laughs> you're definitely gonna change, and um, if you're not willing to to change, then um, think twice about it. But if you are, and I think most people are searching for that that thing to change in their life, then this is the step to take because um, the elements are gonna push you forward, and, and the people and and the, um, the teachings here are just gonna push you forward. So if you, if that's what you really want in your heart. Go for it. I mean, this, as we all know, life is so short. Peru is, it's, I mean, it's an incredible place. Like, it feels so alive in, in, the, in the nature of the place, and then also the people. Like, the you know, the people are beautiful, um, beautiful souls, and they're so connected to, um, they're so connected to the landscape around them, to the earth, and to the mountains, and to the rivers, and um, and I'm really inspired by that. Peru is just a special magical place where you can, it's a bit like plugging into the PowerPoint of the wisdom and knowledge that we try so hard to learn intellectually. If you come here, it just kind of soaks into your bones. That's what it feels like. So it feels like it's part of me. I, I'm just, like it, the most beautiful country I've ever been in. I've been in a lot of countries and there's just so much beauty here, sacred beauty. It's absolutely in my heart. Um, Asensio said it to me. He said it's it's the Aini. He said it's the sacred re reciprocity that they all believe in. And he said that means today for you, tomorrow for me. He said Aini, and that's and he said and they and they believe that and they live that. And it's very it's very apparent. It feels like my heart. Like it feels like a, the heart the heart beating that is pulsing the wisdom and the love out from it. That's what it feels like. And that we can tap into that from wherever we are, which is so beautiful.